Hi there, it is me again. Uh, this is the second part of a quick video series I'm doing for my buddy Jack Austin, who has one, been one of the supporters of this channel for a long time now, and I really appreciate you, man. Um, he asked me, how do you put together a book? And I was speaking about how there are really three separate um, ingredients that you need, and they are sort of separate things that come together to create a satisfying book. And the first of those is the narrative. And the narrative is what happens. It's, you know, James Bond gets an assignment to go and uh, meet Hugo Drax. And then he learns that Hugo Drax is uh, secretly a, a, a Nazi trying to blow up London. He stops him blowing up London. And then you have your, your happily ever after, except it's not quite because he doesn't get the girl. That's your narrative. These are the events that happen. And obviously, um, these are very, very important. Um, in, in any book and uh, the part that's that's really the most fun as a writer uh, I did a, a big video series about the first James Bond book Casino Royale and I was kind of speaking about how Ian Fleming had concocted the idea for this book he when it was in Jamaica and he was like I'm married now I'm having a midlife crisis I need to do something my brother's a writer maybe I could be a writer too I need to write an adventure story what shall I write about and he literally searched his memory banks and he was a very well-traveled guy who'd gone to all sorts of interesting places and done all sorts of interesting things and he took components and he pieced them together like a jigsaw puzzle into a story it's like he was oh I remember back in 1942 I was in Portugal and I was playing cards against some Nazis and he concocted a story to his friends about how he like uh, made them made them um, go bankrupt and therefore whatever scheme they were planning they weren't able to go through. So it was like maybe I'll take that as the, the foundation. Obviously they can't be Nazis; they're going to have to be Soviets. And he was like, "What kind of hero can I have?" And he he wanted the the blunt instrument, the person. Very interesting thing. He always said that it was a person things happened to rather than caused things to happen so he created James Bond and then you know James Bond worked for the Secret Service so he had to create M who he based off his old boss and he literally grabbed bits of his own life and squished them together into a narrative um, and that's what I do as well I always say writers don't invent anything everything that you write about uh, it comes from some part of your own life story uh your own experiences and you take people you know and you take places you've been and you've taken events and you put them together and sometimes you'll be inspired by a piece of fiction like um i'm gonna wrap up my my current story arc with a high stakes game of poker which is kind of inspired by casino royale so all of these different things come together I say like a jigsaw puzzle, but a jigsaw puzzle makes you think that it's all going to fit together neatly, whereas sometimes you need to do a bit of squishing and a bit of cramming. Um, but that's how you come up with your narrative. And James Bond is always an interesting example because the narrative for James Bond tends to be very plot driven and very event driven. It's like James Bond gets given an assignment. He goes and goes through his assignment. And that's fine. That tends to be... Uh, something that happens uh, more often in fiction written by men than fiction women, written by women because the real beauty and the real exciting part of coming together with a narrative is the fact that you're going to hit a stage as a writer in which your books write themselves and it sounds absolutely crazy do I have a copy of uh, High Point kicking around? Uh, I don't but I was Let's use an example of this book. Here we go. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, adventure. This is the first book I ever wrote. And um, pretty much every single mistake a first-time writer ever makes, I made with this book. But think about... The, I was thinking about the narrative for this particular book. I was like, what did I want to do? I wanted to write an adventure story like The Saint and James Bond about a young, plucky hero. And um, I had in the back of my mind, you know, where am I going to set it? And I thought, Paris. Because I'd spent so many years in Paris. And part of my story I wanted the, the character to, to start out like completely clueless and then have this high stakes adventure uh, at the end of which he was a little more mature a little more uh, put together he, he kind of he'd improved he'd gone through some self-development and then I was thinking you know who am I going to have as the love interest and I literally took uh, an old crush of mine and I gave her the name of somebody that uh, I vaguely knew because uh, 
some in-joke that we had in Paris. Uh, the professor in this, I was like, who could, who would be the person I would trust instantly if I met them? And I like based him off Avery Brooks, the actor who played Cisco in uh, Star Trek Deep Space Nine, because he was the kind of guy I would naturally trust instantly. And all these things come together. The car in it was uh, the car that I had when I first moved to America. And this chase scene where they, they uh, try and outrun a TGV to the south of France was something that I was inspired about from a story my father had told me when he did the Milan to Turin run in the 1950s. So all these little pieces come together to create the narrative. And it's really, really fun. But when you become more advanced as a writer, the narrative literally writes itself. For example, my book, High Point, um, I woke up at three o'clock in the morning and it was almost as if the book kind of baked itself in my head. And I had no choice but to write it because what had happened is in my knucklehead series, I got to this stage where um, I wrote a book about how this evil black clad uh, organization of gunmen was going to go after and send hit squads to each of the former members of this club. And, you know, I've written uh, two books already about this happening uh, to particular characters uh, and it was kind of like reintroducing them. And then there was one character I had who uh, had been mentioned twice in like two lines of a book. He was called Popeye. Uh, and the ironic thing was in one book I called him Max and in another book I called him James. And so I was sitting, sitting there knowing that this character, Popeye, Max, James, whoever he was, was somewhere out there and the knuckleheads hadn't been able to, to find him to warn him about this and i knew that these gunmen were going to come in and attack him and try and kill him and of course max is going to be a, a a pretty feisty guy so he can look after himself and that was already just the germ of the story i couldn't help but write that story because those events had already been put in motion by other books and then i was like okay um what's Max doing? And I, I picked Florida because I was inspired by a song by James McMurtry. And um, I, I picked he, the, the love interest. I based him off my wife as she is now because we were going through some massive arguments at that time. And it was kind of like, can you write a love story about somebody who you sometimes just want to, obviously you'd ne never do anything inappropriate uh, with somebody you have arguments with. But if somebody to make a love interest somebody who was antagonistic was kind of interesting and uh so i literally grabbed the character my, the base the character off my wife i even used the same first name um and then it was a case of like okay so maybe they're getting divorced that's where the story begins and uh then these black that's when these black clad gun, gunmen come in and start shooting up the place and i was like okay well what happens then they survive the gunfight and i'm like what if what if this this woman uh based off my wife uh whose wife had a kid had a kid who was max's step kid not not his biological kid and he gets kidnapped and, and max feels the sense of duty because max started to, to come alive inside me as a character i was like he's a he's a dutiful guy he likes to do the right thing that's why he married tina and that's why he's he wants to go after uh Tina's daughter and then I was like where are they going to find a boat from and I found this amazing boat this real boat for sale called the PCH1 High Point it was uh, a decommissioned military hydrofoil that you could buy for $46,000 it was actually for sale at the time so I was like maybe that's the boat he does maybe he fixes it up and I was like well you know he's he's got a lot of adventures going on how am I going to get him to, to fix it up and I was like wouldn't it be cool if uh, if you had I don't know somebody who was interested in that and I was like my kid 12 year old kid is interested in that and he's slightly on the autism spectrum so i thought it'd be really kind of a cool thing if this 12 year old kid who was genius uh was a stowaway on this boat when they went to go and chase after his sister because obviously he wants to get his sister back and what happens is the characters if you can create them and even if you just like pluck them out of out of real air will start to have motivations of their own and the story writes itself because the motivations of the characters will clash and that's where you have to to look at you know the motivations of the character my character of tina was you know very fear driven and my character of max was very by the book military guy and they'd clash and it's like how would each character react and if the characters are real in your head 
then it, it's pretty easy to figure out how they would uh, how they would react to each other and how they would act and that helps drive the narrative along to the point where if you have some really strong characters you're you can't help but just figure out how they would react to each conflict that they end up finding themselves in and that becomes your narrative the book writes itself I mean for me I've written 11 books in my knucklehead series um, and just because of the, the the loose ends that I've left with so many characters uh, I've got another 10 books that I just have to write I mean yeah that's that's it this is why I need to really get over my writer's block and get back into writing because I have 10 stories I need to tell and you know I I can't let them die in my head so I've got to write these 10 books before I can even think of Hemingway myself um, and it's fun it's really really exciting um, but your narrative is just what happens and how you can turn that into a story is something else completely that we'll talk about in the next video uh, the only thing I will say about the narrative is that it has to be character driven and you think about the events and you think about what happens and you can't make things happen because you want them to happen you have to make things happen because that is logically how the characters would react um, and sometimes you can throw like little curveballs in it's a great piece of writing advice is like if you ever find yourself with writer's block have the hero or heroine go back to their apartment and find the place ransacked and then you've got to figure out the reason why and little tricks like that can help but it's always got to be character based and character driven because that ha that makes everything that you're trying to do seem so much more authentic and you can get in touch with the characters much better anyway i'm running out of memory on my phone so i will wrap this up but there we go uh yeah first important stage in putting together a book is the narrative the events that happen and next time we will talk about how you can turn that into a story cheerio